to my kitchen. Today I'm going to share with you my recipe for cashew ricotta. Are you going to help make the ricotta, Mashley? The base is cashews and I put a little bit of coconut in there for sweetness. The cashews have the nuttiness, the creaminess. It's the same process as ricotta. We're heating the milk with acid, which will make it curdle and then we'll strain it overnight in the fridge. It's an easy recipe. It's only about 35 minutes of active work spread out over three days. Three days, three outfit changes. Let's get started. Night one, soak 1.5 cups of cashews or 210 grams and half a cup of coconut flakes or 30 grams. Fill that up with some water, pop a lid on it, put it in the fridge. We have our soaked cashews and coconut. They look nice and plump. I'm gonna strain this, get all the coconut pieces. Just give it a good rinse off. Let's get our cashews and coconut into the blender. Three cups of water. Pop on. Now we're gonna blend for five minutes. Okay. There's some cashew milk on the lens. Sorry about that. This is the step that some of you might not enjoy. It requires the most patience. Transfer the milk into a heavy bottom pot. You're gonna put half a teaspoon of salt in on medium low for about 20 minutes. And the thing is, you're gonna wanna walk away, you're gonna wanna do something else, it will burn. You need to keep stirring it. That's a lot of cashews and a lot of, a lot of soap time overnight that you will have wasted. And I have done that on a much bigger scale at the restaurant, so it doesn't feel good. Don't walk away. Bits will start to sort of stick to the bottom and you just wanna keep it moving. Keep it moving until there's a lot of steam coming off of the milk and little bubbles start to form. I love using it on the base of a salad. So you smear this on the bottom of the plate. Then put your roasted veggies, fresh veggies, your greens, a little crunch, herbs, a pesto, and sort of build up the salad from there. Makes it feel like a main dish. Totally mix this into pastas. It can be a pasta salad. Use it as a spread on toast. It's a great dip if you're having a cheese board. A sweet ricotta toast. Mm, it's starting to stick a little bit. This is when you really want to watch it. Stirring. Growing up, I was allergic to dairy and I couldn't have any of it. And then in my late teens, early 20s, I wasn't allergic. And now, only recently, have I started having it every now and then. I can only have a little bit. I'm French, I grew up with my dad having a million different cheeses in the fridge and having them after dinner every single night as a ritual. I think that's beautiful, but I really can't handle that much of it. And I was vegan for 10 years, so I've had many a vegan cheese. I know a thing or two. There's something magical about making it yourself. It's just cool to see something transform. It's really thickening up. And you know, 20 minutes of stirring and doing one task isn't the worst thing in the world. It's meditative, which is another great reason to love cooking. I definitely think cashews are my favorite nut. They're also just the most incredible plant. Have you seen how a cashew grows? Cashew comes out of, I think it's a cashew apple. So it comes off the, of a fruit. Wild to think of the harvesting process. So treat your cashews with respect. Let me show you. See how there's quite a bit of steam coming off of this now? There are some little bubbles happening. Show us your bubbles! Oh, see? We got little bubbles. I'm gonna remove this from the heat and let it sit for 10 minutes. While that is cooling slightly, we are going to prep the acid, which is going to make the cream curdle. We're using lemon and the apple cider vinegar. You can use white vinegar. I've just always used apple cider vinegar for the added health benefits. It'll do the same. The apple cider vinegar will give it slightly a different taste. A quarter cup plus two tablespoons or 95 grams of lemon juice. I'd say it's gonna be about one and a half lemons, but no lemons created equal, okay? So you're gonna have to measure. I would use a sieve. Make sure you don't get any little seeds in here. Then we're going to add our apple cider vinegar. It's gonna be 12 grams or one and a half teaspoons. This is the exciting part. Transformations are gonna be happening. Gently incorporate. You see how it is starting to curdle. You don't need to over stir it. We're gonna prepare our cheesecloth bed. We're gonna tuck our little ricotta up for the night. You made a bowl big enough for your sieve to sit in. I'm gonna choose this one. Make sure that there's gonna be enough space at the bottom for whatever liquid drains off isn't gonna be touching your cheese. Overnight, 
water or whey will strain off of it and you'll be left with thick but creamy beautiful cheese cheesecloths easy to find at most grocery stores it's cheap you can reuse it if you wash it properly you want to make sure to have at least four layers here it's one long piece like this make sure wherever the folds are i'm gonna cut and i'll do that again so that i have two pieces and i'll lay them in a cross one like this and one like that if you have any gaps, it will find the gaps and squeeze out and it won't strain properly. Let's, let's pour our cheese in. I recommend a rubber spatula for this part so that you don't leave anyone behind. I'm going to gather the sides and I'm going to tie it an elastic. Look at how cute this is. Oh, 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 oh. Let's tie her up. You do want a bit of pressure on it to encourage the liquid to strain off. And see, this is, this is a classic thing. It's not a big deal, but see how like this piece kind of got away? The mixture will ooze out if you don't, if you're not quick. I actually am noticing there's one little area where some of the cheese is seeping out, so I'm just going to add another layer. There we go. I'm gonna place this plate on top just so that there's a little bit of pressure. And the great thing about putting a little plate on it, you don't need to use plastic wrap or anything like that. But we're gonna pop her in the fridge. We'll strain overnight. We'll check on her tomorrow morning. See you tomorrow, ricotti. Are you gonna help make the ricotta, Marjorie? Marge actually has a lot of allergies, so. I think you're just gonna stick to your hydrolyzed chicken diet. I'm so sorry about that. Huh, my little ricotta baby. And I'm the cheesecloth, huh? Welcome to day three of the ricotta journey, the final day. Let's take her out of the fridge and make some breakfast. She's been in the fridge for, I wanna say, almost 10 hours now. Just hanging out, releasing the juices. Let's have a look at her. All of this liquid has drained off. There's almost a cup in there. This is my favorite part. Mmm. Forgot to wet the cheesecloth before putting it down, which helps in it not sticking as much. You can decide how you want to flavor your cashew ricotta. If you already have something in mind on how you want to utilize it, that can help. Usually I will add a little bit of nutritional yeast to give it a bit of a cheesy flavor. If I know that I'm doing a specific salad, for example, put some orange zest in here, a little bit of sumac. If you knew you were gonna be using it for a sweet application, you could leave it as is. You could add garlic powder, onion powder, you could add a bunch of pepper. You could make it spicy. You could do anything you want. Uh, oh, gorgeous. I love how you can see the cheesecloth detail. This will give you a good amount of cheese. I believe it's four cups. I try and get as much off of the cheesecloth as possible. You could divide it in four and you could try four different flavorings. This is the ricotta tasting spoon. Long and elegant. It's so subtle. Slightly tangy, slightly cheesy, slightly salty. It's an amazing texture and a great, a great base. So let's jazz it up a bit. Typically I'll put a quarter cup of nutritional yeast, which is about 13 grams. I'm gonna give you a good look at the texture. The nutritional yeast is basically all incorporated now. Beautiful. Airtight container, put it in the fridge and it'll last you all week. For our little breakfast, I have a grilled lovely piece of sourdough. Our cashew ricotta spread, grilled fennel, Favorite vegetables. I have some arugula here, olive oil, salt, poached and eggy. A little bit of oil on the egg, a little bit of salt on the egg, herb always. And I had some sauerkraut in the fridge. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. I hope you make it. Go forth, be confident, be patient. I'm gonna go eat my breakfast now. Like and subscribe for more. Thank you.